Capitol Hill ahead of that deadline, which is almost here. Let's ask Vermont Democrat Peter Welch. He's one of the lawmakers leading the charge for a clean extension of the debt limit. He joins us now to talk about where we stand. Congressman, thank you so much for your time today. Good to be here. Let's talk about where we are right now. The Senate has cut its recess short. They'll be back Tuesday. The House is hard at work as well. What are your hopes for getting something done, making some progress on negotiating a deal? Well, there, there's two issues, and this is what the American people, I think, need to understand. One is, do we pay our bills or do, or, or do we default on our debt? That is going to happen on August 2nd, and we cannot allow America, for the first time in its history, to default. The consequences of that are enormous. Now, the second issue is uh, equally important, and that is getting a long-term resolution to restore fiscal balance. Now, there's a big debate. Uh, in my view, we should have balanced cuts and we should have balanced revenues. But what we can't do is what politicians generally do, and that is use the leverage available at the moment, the debt ceiling, and overplay our hand to the point where we go into default. If we do, if we default, and let's say interest rates then spike as they do, a 1% increase in the interest rates that taxpayers have to pay on the debt, that's $160 billion added uh, to the long-term debt. This is a very dangerous game. All right, we are a month out at this point, and we know that there is some back timing to that because legislation has to be written and drafted. The votes have to be taken. Uh, what do you think is truly the drop-dead deadline for actually negotiating out the content of this deal? Well, Secretary Geithner uh, says, of course, August 2nd is the drop-dead date. That's when we have to make decisions on who we won't pay. And then uh, everything I read is that it would take one to two weeks, actually, to draft a bill after an agreement. And then normally you end up having a lot of disputes that arise because the difference between what people thought they agreed to and what's on paper uh, emerge. And uh, the, the question you ask is a very good one. When we had the negotiations about keeping the lights on in government, it went up to the midnight hour. But, you know, if we turn the lights off for an hour or two, it wouldn't be catastrophic. It would be inconvenient, but we could get through it. On the other hand, if we create anxiety in the markets at some point, uh, anxiety about whether we'll pay our bills, at some point the markets will turn. And when they turn, it will be sudden, and it will be savage, and the damage will be lasting. And that will hurt whether you have a Democratic position on revenues or a Republican position on cuts, we'll all lose. So we can't play uh, fiscal Russian roulette with the American economy. And you talk about keeping the government going. Of course, folks who followed that are very familiar with the fact that we had those continuing resolutions, the short-term measures that kept the funding going to keep the government going. And now a lot of people are floating this idea of coming to a short-term deal on the debt ceiling, something that would extend us maybe six or eight months until a longer-term deal could be hammered out. Would you be for or against a mini-deal? Well, I'd be for anything that avoids default, uh, pretty much, uh, because the consequences of default are catastrophic. And again, it's whatever your position is on the long-term resolution, whether you think it should be all cuts or a mixture of cuts and revenues, if we default, uh, the markets will punish everybody, Republicans, Democrats, and independents alike. So if, we're, if we fail to get a resolution that allows for a long-term uh, step going forward, uh, then short-term is better than default. Uh, okay, over on the other side of the Hill, your colleagues over in the Senate, every Republican there has signed on to something that would put together a balanced budget amendment, hoping to ward off this kind of thing in the future. They don't have a, se a single Democrat on board at this point. Would you support a measure like that? Well, I absolutely wouldn't support that measure. I mean, that's a political hair Mary pass. That essentially uh, calls for, quote, a balanced budget, but it requires, I think, a 60 percent or two-thirds vote uh, for any taxes. Uh, there's no way to have the flexibility that you need to make responsible decisions on budgeting. Uh, what I see is that is essentially a political gambit to try to divert attention from making the tough decisions that Republicans and Democrats together have to make about getting our country on long-term fiscal uh, sta a stable path. All right, Congressman Peter Welch, we appreciate you sharing part of your holiday weekend with us and hope you have a wonderful Independence Day. Thank you very much.